Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are starting a new series as I asked you on Twitter what exactly you prefer for me to create as a full course. So what I'm going to be recording is a full course from beginner to a professional 3D artist. In this course we are going to cover the very basics of different softwares like 3ds Max, ZBrush, Photoshop, Substance Painter and as well Unreal 4 and because the course is created for people that are either just starting or people that have not yet decided what exactly to pick from the 3D software, we are going to start very slowly and as we progress to the intermediate and advanced part of the series, I'm going to make the tutorials more dynamic and also packed with more information. Subscribe so that you can easily follow the series and also consider joining the membership of my channel as it's now available and there are many interesting perks that you can get from there, for example the scenes that I'm creating for the channel. Also I'll be creating some 3D assets, brushes and other helping materials that you will be able to download each month and many other things, so go check it out. Now let's start with part 1 which is going to be the very basics of 3ds Max. We are going to use 3ds Max 2021, but if you're using an older version, don't be upset because interface didn't change that much in the last couple of years. Almost everything from the menus that uh, I'll be showing you is exactly on the same place. This is the default layout when you have the software installed and I'll be using for everything default settings. Let's first start with the upper side of our toolbars. Here in the very beginning we have our undo and redo. Then we have some linking tools which are used mostly for animation. Then we have our selection tools. Here from the drop down we can choose if we want to have some restriction on our selection and select only certain type of elements or we want to select all which is by default. Then we have our select object tool. Then we can select by name. You can see that when I'm hovering on some of them there is a small brackets. This is showing our shortcut. Then we have the type of selection, by default is rectangular, this means that if I click and drag while holding, you can see that we are making a rectangle, but we can of course change it to circular, or we can change it to spray one which will select everything wherever my mouse is moving. Then we have window or crossing selection, to show you better what does this mean, I will just very quickly create a sphere deselect it and now we have the crossing selection which means that even if slightly our selection crosses with the object it will select it but if I switch to the window one this means that now it will be completely ignored unless it's fully inside the selection window. I will leave our sphere here to show you better the rest of the elements. The next section is tools which are helping us to move or manipulate objects and elements in the 3D space. First one is select and move, so we can select with it. The difference between this and the select tool, as you can see, are those arrows. This is called gizmo. I will toggle between this one and the select tool, just so that you can see. So what the gizmo is, is showing us like the X, Y, Z and all the three axes that we can move our object in our 3D space. So if I hover on one of the axes and it becomes yellow, this means that I'm selecting this axis, I can click and hold and then move it. or you can see that there are these small squares which means that I'm selecting both of the axes and I can move the object on both of them. Next tool is our select and rotate. We can again select objects but instead of arrows we have these lines which allows us to rotate the object in 3D space. Next one is scale. This is a tool which helps us scale object on one or multiple axes. And for the last one, select and place is a tool which uh, to illustrate it better what it does, I'll need to create another sphere. I'll just make a smaller one. I'll select this tool. And when we have an object selected, and then we drag it to another object, you can see that it places it on the surface of the other object. It's a very easy and very nice tool when you have, when you have more organic shapes to place other objects on these organic shapes without putting a lot of effort in rotating and manipulating their position and orientation. Here we can find all of our snaps and angle snaps and, and everything that will help us do manipulation with exact measurements. After that we have mirror, after that we have align, 
Then we have our toggle scene explorer, which is this panel here on the side. It shows us what objects do we have in the scene by name. And quickly from here we can hide and unhide them or freeze them if we want to avoid changing them by mistake. And our last section will be for materials and rendering. It's a topic that we will be covering a little bit in the future of the series. Now let's go on the right side. Here we have our create and modify menu. The first section is create. So from this section we are going to be starting our models. From the menu we can get some of the primitives so that we can start building up our 3D scene. In the beginning we will be using standard primitives as well as some splines. So you can see that I'm in create, then I'm in geometry, and then I'm in standard primitives. And after that we will see box, sphere, cylinder and all these other objects that we can create in our scene. The second tab is modify. So here when we have an object created and it's being selected, it will show us all the modification that we can do on this object. On the very bottom we have a timeline. This is because 3ds Max can be used as well for animations. So in this timeline we can create keyframes. It's also a topic that we will cover in our future videos in this course. But now I just want to walk you through about some of the buttons and features so that you are familiar what does this section of the interface does. So as I said we have our timeline. Then here on X, Y and Z we have three boxes which show us parameters about our object that we have selected. At the moment you can see that uh, it just shows some random numbers. This is because it shows where my mouse is pointing. But if I select the object and go to select and move to, you can see that here we have at the moment some coordinates. These are the coordinates of where the pivot point of this object is. If I go to select and rotate, you can see that it changed. So now we see actually on what degree this object is being rotated. These are very useful statistics and something that we will be using quite a lot. Then right next to it are all the tools that we will use for manipulating when creating animations. We can play our timeline, we can go frame by frame or we can go from the very beginning or at the very end of our animation. As well as here we have the tools for adding another keyframe and of course on the side for manipulating how these keyframes behave. And the last tools that I want to talk about are the ones on the very bottom right corner. Here we have the tools which help us uh, manipulate our viewport. So the way that you can navigate inside the viewport and rotate your camera from a different angle is either by using this box here on the top using these tools here or some of the key combinations that I will tell you. So here we have zoom which can help us zoom in and out of the scene. Then we have our field of view which can change the view angle of the camera. Then we have our pan view which can help us move around. Then we have our orbit which can help us rotate our camera around. We can do all these things by different key combinations and it's very important for you to learn those key combinations because it will help you navigate faster in the scene. If you want to pan, you need to click the scrolling wheel on your mouse and hold it. This will allow you to pan. If you want to rotate your camera, you again click the same wheel but this time you're holding out. So you hold out and then you click the wheel and you can rotate or you can scroll up and down the wheel of your mouse and zoom in and out. Another very useful button in the very beginning because you can very easily lose yourself around the viewport is Z. If I go somewhere on the side and I click Z it will center my scene to see all the objects that I have. Also if I have an object selected it will focus on this object. I will very quickly make another sphere on the side and show you what I mean. If I select this one, click Z, it goes to this sphere. But if I select this one and click Z, it will focus on the other sphere. And the very last thing that I want to talk about is our viewport layout. At the moment we have four different viewports. We have our top, front, left and perspective. Of course, if we want to maximize on a whole screen so that we see better what we are doing, we can select the viewport. You will understand that the viewport is selected by the yellow lines on the side and click this button on the very right bottom corner. You can see that we maximized our viewport. To remove this and go back to the four views, you can either click it again or click Alt and W. 
Alt and W is the shortcut for maximizing our viewport. Thank you for joining in the first episode of this series. Subscribe so that you can follow the rest of the episodes. See you next time.